Hans and Shanté. Thank you for agreeing to have a little chat with me about Thank you for coming. and invite me to your home here as well. Um, I'm doing a bit of a series now is costs of living in Thailand, all over Thailand. We've been to Pai, we've obviously seen some areas in Isan where I am. And everybody lives on a different budget. So today you're going to be seeing the budget that Hans and Shanté live on. And I'm also then going to be showing you um, a restaurant belonging to a friend of mine called Thomas. And he's going to talk a little bit about his budget there. Um, but before we get into that, let me start with Hans. How did you end up in Thailand, originally from South Africa? So right after school, I went to university and uh, went to university for about a year. Didn't quite work out the way I wanted to. And my parents just said, well, should we, should you go for another year in university or should you try something abroad? So um, they, we found Thailand, we found this opportunity in Thailand through a company an agency that does placements and stuff they do you go through this course so I did a three weeks course in Krabi called the TEFL course mm -hmm. and um, met a bunch of people there we did the course for three weeks and then we started working all over Thailand I was working here for about a year in, in Rangsit it's like an hour outside of Bangkok very rural uh, teaches you a lot of things how to look after yourself not to be such a you know snob and all that. You know. <laughs> I had to give up a lot of luxuries from back home, you know, a lot of a lot of comforts, and then um, that didn't quite work out at the end. You know, I had some issues with the employer; he didn't like me. Uh, his wife was a bit inappropriate with me, as Thai ladies can be sometimes. Wait a minute, I'm gonna have to ask you more on that. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to get away with me not asking about that. Is she was flirtatious? Or? It's a bit of a weird situation, you know. Um, so she was in the office all the time, you know. She was a bit of a bigger lady and he was a very small man. And um, she would always make a lot of inappropriate jokes, you know. Like she would have a banana at school. It's like, ah, oh, teacher Han, you have banana? <laughs> or she would have these balls from class and she would hold two up and say, oh, Han, see, you're bald like this? <laughs> So it got really weird and he did of course of course he did not like that at all and as soon as he got the opportunity because the principal got fired and he moved up to vice principal and immediately the next day he called me to his office and said you are god son god <laughs> we haven't met at this time oh you yeah, haven't met at this point okay. yeah. i was out here by myself i went back to south africa and then probably she was the the odd one in my friend group that I haven't met before. Okay. How and many years ago was this? This is 2017. Seven. Okay. Seven 2000. years ago. Yeah. So you were, you were like, you've got to come to Thailand. There's yeah, perverted teachers. There's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like this, that's, that's, that's how he sold me on it. Yeah, for sure. I think she started to realize that there's no real opportunity for us there in South Africa unless we come from a wealthy family or we have some kind of connection to send us on our way. We have a lot of friends still living in South Africa that want to come here, but they're afraid to take the leap. But eventually I did convince her, so we came here 2018. Yeah, so like I always had this dream of living abroad since, since I was little. I told my mom, like, I don't want to live in South Africa. I don't want to fall into the rat trap of um, going to university, meeting a guy, getting a house, getting yourself in debt, getting a car, getting kids, working at the same job, hating your life, going to the same pub every single day after work or every single Friday, doing the same old thing all the time. So I always had this dream of going overseas, but I never knew where to go or what to do. And then I met him and he told me about Thailand, looked into it a little bit and then, yeah. And what was it that sold you about hands? <laughs> I wasn't sold in the beginning. The, it took, the, it yeah. took a little bit. Are you little... even sold now? I don't oh. know. Oh! <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and yeah, it started out with him. So I was smoking cigarettes at that time, like chain smoking. And it started out, we would go out and then constantly he would ask me for cigarettes, but never had a conversation until. Like this would go on like night after night after night, just asking me constantly for cigarettes. And I mean, I'm, I'm on a small budget, like I can stop smoking my <laughs> the cigarettes. Issue, the issue was she's very chatty. And <laughs> once she starts talking to someone, you're not necessarily going to steal her away. 
Uh. You know, so it was a bit difficult for me because she was always so engaged in conversation with someone else. And I was just like trying to plant the seed, you know? Yeah. The only way I would get her attention would maybe be later on WhatsApp, where I got her, got her number from the gr- friend group on WhatsApp and I started talking to her on WhatsApp. <laughs> and then finally I got her attention, she came to visit me and she, she was already a bit drunk that night, I remember, it was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I went she out drinking with my yeah, parents. <laughs> she was out drinking with the parents and then she just unloaded when she came to me. But I loved it. That's kind of where I fall, fell in love with her you know, that night. Now, before we go into kind of what you do here to earn money and, and, and support yourselves here, um, let's talk about the place where you live. How did you find this place? And tell us a little bit about it. And if you could share with us one of the rental prices around this area, that'd be awesome. So, this place is a steal. yeah, this I was looking on um, Facebook Marketplace day in and day out, and then I saw this place. It was actually an Airbnb before. Okay. So I saw this place come up on Marketplace for fifty. And at that stage, 15, 15, yes. 15,000 baht baht per month. month. Okay, right. So was it furnished with 15,000 furnished? furnished. Used to be an Airbnb. Okay, so the sofa was in. Was the TV in? TV was in. Okay, good, good. Places are steel. We brought that thing. (laughs) You brought the mini bar. We brought the mini bar bar and the office stuff. And we put that throw over (laughs) the, the head. A weird Thai, Buddhist, whatever okay. painting, and we kind of wanted to make it a bit more bohemian. Okay. So we we had a budget at that time because um, both of us, you you came to work for a company here, and then things didn't work out, so we were actually jobless at that time. Yeah. So I told them, hey, listen, like our budget is only eleven. I know it's going for twelve, but I'm willing to push our budget up to thirteen. Would you be willing to drop? So it was going for 15, but then you had a, you had 11 and you said, meet me in the middle. Yeah. Yes. So right. I told, and he was like, okay, if you pay the deposit today, you can have it. And then for the bills here, what is your average electricity bill per month? I'm assuming that's on top of the 13. Yeah. 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 So our electricity, I mean, we work from home, so um, we don't really use much aircon. We would use the aircon a little bit in the office, but we mainly use, use fans and stuff. But it would be like 4,000 a month. But this is where we are at home basically 24 seven. Yeah. We are on the laptops, lights are on, fans are on, aircons are on. So I mean 4,000 is Okay. Yeah. And living so far out of like the main area, I say so far, it's not really so far. <laughs> 10 minutes. But if, <laughs> if you want to go to the beach, it's 10 minutes, right? 10, 10 yeah. to 15 minutes, depending on which one you want to go to. So what do you, what do you s- spend on like petrol? And getting around and transport oh, so, so cheap yeah we have two bikes and we would fill the bikes up um Once mine a week? yeah mine is about like 180 baht per week week and a half and his yeah, is about, about like 150 140 per week week and a half all right so yeah. it's it's nothing, nothing. Yeah. It's nothing. Right. we used to have a car cars are much more expensive yeah mm-hmm. but um with the traffic nowadays, like it's nice bike. to have a car. Come rain, come shine, I like the bike. <laughs> it's nice to have a car with the rainy season and everything, but the traffic's just such a nightmare. It's just not worth it. I'd rather just put on a poncho and just go. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. We kind of figure it out. And what about like your diets? Are you guys carnivores? Are you vegans? Are you vegan, Hans? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't know. No. You, you're a vegan, Maybe so. I don't know. Vegans. I could never be a vegan. <laughs> So, what are you spending on food, and what kind of what your diet's like? Um, so our budget for food in a month, um, if it's just the two of us, is around four to five thousand baht. But that's for me cooking at home. So I oh, cook, really? I cook lunch, dinner every single day. Well, most of the days, if I do get lazy sometimes. We do try to like prep it beforehand. Yeah. It doesn't always work out, but we do try. Yeah, do you I cook, Hans? No. no. I'm there for support and packing. Moral support. Clean, I'm, there, I'm the pack, I'm the cleaner. I clean out and I pack everything in a little, I package everything. <laughs> yeah, so I would say, I would say if you, if you're cooking at home, uh, 2,000 to 25 per month for one person, um, yeah, and you cook, and that's meat, we meat, got a macro. all your staples. So you got a macro you buy in bulk? Yeah, bulk. Th- this is yeah. if you're not buy at Villa and Tops on your fancy supermarket. Yeah, okay. so yeah, well, yeah, for sure. Yeah. You could go there, you know, but if you want more quality meat and stuff, but it's like not really 6, worth it to us. 
Yeah. You know, we could find all the products that we need at Macro. That's um, a good budget for food. Yeah. I think that's probably one of the lowest budgets for food that I've that I've heard. Really? Yeah, so far. So I'm doing good. <laughs> yes, you're doing great. Like, yeah. It, and if you're buying in bulk, it makes sense, and you're preparing mm. it, and you're getting the, the two meals a day. Do you eat out a lot or not? I would guess also depending on what what you want to eat. So you you can if you can have a budget of let's say an extra thousand to two thousand baht per month if you do Thai food and here and there a little bit international food, but it would be obviously way more if you just want to eat pizzas and burgers and like your international food. So Thai food is really cheap. I mean, you can get a meal for 70 baht. What do you spend on like gym so, and leisure, that kind of thing? So now we just go here to Robinson, they have a 24 hour gym there. It's called James. Uh, we go month by month, it's 1,700 baht a month. Yeah. And then you can obviously sign so for six months and then you gym. get discount if you sign for a bit longer. So for leisure and stuff like that, I think the biggest problem is just uh, How much sunsets. You drink? <laughs> well, I'm going to get to that. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah, I mean the beer budget is a little bit separate. From, oh. You said 1,700 for the gym and stuff. Yeah. What are you spending on the other side on the oh, beer? Oh, see, that's the thing. The beers, the beers can go anything from what, like five a month to more, ten a month, depending on how much you got. I mean, like one night. One night out can cost us 2,000 baht, and this is not us going to Café Del Mar or... Which is very conservative. Yeah. So five or 10,000, ten, probably on the, on the uh, nature no, side, no, 10,000, 10, 10, 10, especially here in Phuket. I mean, if you go to, if you, if that's your vibe and you, you, you party at Café Del Mar or catch or like, uh, yeah. what's, what's the... The fancy, the fancy clubs. Yeah, the fancy yeah. clubs. I mean, then, then your budget can be 10, up to nights. 20... 30 like it it can go it can go up so when, when, I, when i lived here in phuket in my car i think my monthly budget for partying back in those days was 40 40k easily 40 it's, 50 000. that's yeah. the thing like you it depends on how much you drink and also what you drink do you drink beers do you drink spirits it's it's very expensive to drink here so we try to if we go out we try to limit it to beers like the cheap alcohol yeah um or if if we go out, we would try to do like a little sneaky sneak in a in a in a uh, plastic bottle or something. Yeah. If we if we want to drink spirits or something, <laughs> you go sneaking to, in. You go yeah. to uh, uh, super cheap and you buy the bottle of Gilby. <laughs> this is this is the fact. You need to learn. And then you, you also come. buy a bottle of water and you drink the whole bottle until you're hydrated and then you fill up the bottle with the Gilby. You put it in your. In your, in Not Gilby's, no, vodka. <laughs> we do. When do you drink Gilby's? Gilby's is the brand of the vodka. Oh, true. It's Gilby's and gin and vodka. True. Yeah. It's terrible. Vodka. I love our issues with the brand and not the taking it in a bottle. Like, <laughs> Gilby's? <laughs> what do you think we are, cheapskates? Yeah, fill the bottle of water and take it to Catch Beach Club. <laughs> so, um, before we go into kind of watch how you stay here, what would you say is kind of your overall monthly budget, your overall monthly spend, what you, you work to, what you usually spend? Some people have an idea in the head, oh yeah, that's our monthly mm. budget, but when you actually put it on paper, it's not. It it's works not. out quite differently. Yeah, so, what so would you say? Um, our subscriptions and stuff that we have, phone bills, we're looking around 30, 35 a month. And that okay. covers all our bills, including. Um, our groceries and then mm, some of the some of the so products. do you think the beer bill is on top of that though yeah no oh, the yes. beer bill is on top so, of that so you'd say like 35k is your living cost but actually you're spending 45k yes a month yes, yes. yeah Hello. and and then do you ever have months where it kind of just goes like crazy oh, oh yeah. yeah oh yeah <laughs> no for sure like Nuts. that that's the thing depending again and also like if you travel if you like to travel it's cheap to travel in Thailand, but also if you want to go to PP, then you're in holiday mood. So then a quick weekend trip to PP can cost you 10,000 baht. So this brings us in nicely to what you actually do here. So you've mentioned work permit already, Hans, because the interesting thing with your setup is you've registered this house as a business, right? Yes. And yeah. then so you issued a work permit from your own business, from yes. your house. Uh, which is unusual. Usually people rely on a, a corporate uh, employer to issue the work permit, but in doing it this way, you're kind of becoming your own employer. Yeah. And yeah. obviously you're subject to having Thai staff and tax and things like that. So yeah. um, it is one way to do it. 
And so, have you you found success with it so far, though, right? Yes. What what are you what are you guys doing, and so, how do you make money to stay here? We also focus on businesses on the island um, to try and help them through the different waves of high season and low season. So we work with businesses to see how can we still make you money, how can we still um, get you that return on your marketing investment during your low season. So when income is not as high, let's try and think of different opportunities and different ways for you to make, still make money uh, while still getting a return on your investment for, for your marketing. And then obviously when it comes to high season, we also have big ideas help companies yeah, to implement. Yeah, we've prepped them before high season. So Are these like restaurants or, uh, or yeah, hotels? So, yeah, so we mainly, focus, we mainly focus on the um, tourist industry. So everything from restaurants, um, hospitality, hos- yeah, hos- restaurants, hospitality, hotels, um, traveling, traveling companies. So yacht charters, things like that. Anything that the tourists come to do here. Uh-huh. On, on the island, yeah. yeah. So you can find us on uh, Newmatic Media where we will be posting um, tips and tricks for Instagram growing businesses, businesses on the island and how you can grow your own business um, digi- digitally um, in the online space. Then we have New Nomadic Travel where we um, collab with hotels and stuff like that coming soon. Uh, so we post um, where you can travel around Thailand, budget traveling, um, nice places to see, Instagram worthy places to see. And maybe YouTube coming stuff. soon. And then maybe YouTube coming soon, yes, where we can show you more videos on our adventures and things like that. Awesome, guys. Well, thanks for chatting with me today, sharing your budget. Thank you for coming around. Your house. Thank you. And your business. Thank you so much. Thanks, for guys. Us. And just before we talk to my friend Thomas about his cost of living here in Phuket, I'd like to mention Fruiting Body. If you're based in Thailand and you're looking for effective functional mushrooms to add into your lifestyle, Fruiting Body offer a number of different mushrooms from lion's mane to reishi to cordyceps, all used for different reasons. Fruiting Body reishi mushrooms have helped a number of subscribers get to sleep actually. I have emails from people that have tried them and they're available from the link in the description on Lazada. Don't forget to click the button so whether it's taking reishi to help you sleep or lion's mane for the prevention of Alzheimer's as per the study in Australia that showed lion's mane had a significant effect on nerve regeneration whatever mushroom it is you're taking for whatever reason please do leave your feedback as many subscribers have already left comments or sent me emails regarding the effects of these mushrooms and how useful they've been to them please do leave me the feedback I always love to hear it and let's go and talk to my friend Thomas Thomas is the owner of Eden Grill here in Phuket What's the exact location, uh, Thomas? It's Boat Avenue, uh, right in the heart of Chung Tale. So uh, uh, you can say uh, a little bit of the northern side of Phuket. Uh, we are about 25 minutes from the airport. Perfect. And so, Thomas, you've been in Thailand a long, long time. I thought I've been in Thailand a long time, 15 years. You've been in Thailand a long time. Uh, how did you get here? A very long time on and off. Uh, actually, uh, I was working for one of the largest uh, uh, retail chains in Europe called Metro Macro and uh, they sent me to Hong Kong uh, in 1979 as a buying manager for, uh, for fashion uh, at the time. Uh, I spent uh, four years, four and a half years in Hong Kong and uh, then I changed. Uh, actually I went uh, doing my own business uh, already when I was 26. Mm-hmm. So I formed my first, first company in Hong Kong, uh, but at the time, uh, the Thai market was quite interesting. So uh, in 1982, I decided to uh, move to Thailand. Full time? And fu- full time, but I was living in Bangkok, so uh, quite different from here. And uh, life 40 years ago was very different <laughs> from today. Uh, but it was a fantastic time. How so. would you say, chat, you know, to the top of your head, how would you, what do you think has been the biggest change in Thailand since that time? Well, Thailand moved quite a bit ahead. Over the years, tourism started to become a very important uh, economic factor for Thailand. Uh, at the time, uh, in, 19, in the 80s, uh, it was, yes, tourists came, but not in 
the th millions mm -hmm. like today. Yeah. So uh, Thailand, you can say, grew up uh, in a certain way that required change of infrastructure, uh, change of the whole retail uh, uh, business in, in Thailand. Uh, you had to cater to uh, Europeans, you had to cater to Chinese, to, mm -hmm. you had to cater to so many different peoples with different expectations. Uh, but probably because the Thais learned quite quickly, uh, it became such, such a, a, a popular place uh, and probably one of the best uh, holiday countries in the world. Yeah. And uh, so, as you know, I'm talking with different expats about their monthly budgets, things like that. I'm assuming you've been here so long, you don't rent. No, no I, you, I build my own house. Yeah. You build the house here in, in Phuket. Yeah. Did you build it at a time where it was quite cheap to build or is it more of a recent build? No, it's, uh, it's a five year ago build mm -hmm. because uh, the older houses uh, normally don't have or they have a very high maintenance. Uh, a lot of the older houses are built on uh, a lot of wood, uh, which uh, in beach or in island climate rotten quite quite easily. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife also has a certain degree of taste, uh, so uh, she's from Russia, right? She's from Russia. Yeah, yeah. and uh, they like it a bit more modern. So uh, we decided to build as per our both expectations okay. what a house should be. Like. And so it's a multiple bedroom villa. Yeah, it's kind a of four bedroom villa with a pool. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So you don't nice have place. any rental uh, cost per se. No. What does the majority of your monthly cost go on? What were your I monthly spending? The more, I think the most monthly spending is uh, on food and entertainment. Mm -hmm. uh, because food prices, if you want to have, uh, yeah let's say a European standard type of uh, food purchase, uh, you are looking at Villa Market, you are looking at Tops, uh, these kind of places where you basically buy imported food. Yeah. Right, and uh, as you know, uh, import uh, is costly in Thailand. Uh, the, uh, t the duty structure is very high. So uh, those those uh, food costs are double from Europe, easily double from Europe. So what would you budget on an average month for food, entertainment, living here in Phuket? I can say what's my budget, but uh, actually all people from different walks of life can live here. Yes. Right? You can buy food off the street. Uh, we have multiple markets here in Phuket. Uh, well, it's still rather inexpensive, mm -hmm. right? But don't expect cheeses and, and fancy sausages yeah, and if you, if meat. You, if you really want that European diet, you know, on the American diet, you're shopping at Villa Market, you know, you eating out quite a lot as well. Yes. Um, you know, if somebody wants to retire here, they've been saving up in their retirement and that's the kind of lifestyle they want to live. What would you think would be a ballpark figure on food and entertainment? As of, uh, entertainment, of course, uh, depends on how, much, how often you go out yeah. uh, and what kind of restaurants you choose yeah uh, for me uh, I think we are the, a three-person household uh, we are spending probably something between 10 and 12 thousand baht in in food cost okay uh, that includes drinks water whatever yeah uh, if we go out I mean going out in Phuket in a decent place you have to count about 1500 baht per head yes uh, that's probably it. You can eat for 5,000 baht per head, but uh, that is not necessary, right? In order to have a, a, a decent quality, a nice ambiance uh, restaurant, uh, it's around 1,500 baht. And if you drink wine, it's probably 2,000 baht mm -hmm. per head, mm -hmm. right? We do that. Of course, for me, it's easy because I own a restaurant, <laughs> right? <Yeah>. So uh, <laughs> It's one of the ben benefits. That's one of the <laughs> benefits. Uh, however, if we go out, we probably spend another 10,000 uh, per month uh, uh, in, uh, in terms of uh, entertainment outside. That's reasonably low for Phuket. So 10 to 12,000, is that weekly or monthly? No, that is actually monthly. That's, that's very reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, uh, okay, we know how to buy. Uh, we, uh, do you buy in bulk? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's one way to do it, right? Mostly. 
Yeah. And so what would you say are some of the other expenses of living in Phuket for yourself here? You're not paying the rent, that's the, the food covered. I assume you're still paying electricity bills, things like that. You've which is a, high. You're running a pool. So. Yes, which is high. Uh, I have uh, a monthly electricity bill of probably 20,000 baht a month. Yep. Uh, for my house, but uh, we like it cold. Uh, water I don't pay because I, I uh, drilled my own uh, water. Yeah. So uh, I'm self-sustainable there. And uh, what else? Yeah, you have uh, you have vehicle expenses. I have two cars, so my wife has a car, obviously, and I have a car. And then uh, quite a bit is also in activities. You know, we have a kid; uh, uh, he's 14. He plays football. Uh, he's traveling with the school. Uh, uh, he has uh, multiple friends across the island. Uh, uh, we have to drive, so uh, I have at least three, four, five thousand baht uh, gasoline expenses uh -huh. per month. Uh, yeah. So, do you feel that for like an overall budget for somebody as a restaurant owner here in Phuket, an overall budget? It's sounding to me like it's around hundred thousand uh, a month. If you put it all together you rather look at a hundred thousand hundred thousand a month yeah, yeah that is in that in that kind of area I, I mean you can live in Phuket with 20,000 a month yes. if you want to and but in my social circle that is impossible because yes. you yeah. know you get invited you have to invite back uh, you have uh, people from all over the world very international clientele uh, they expect something uh, so uh, Part of those costs that I spend per month here is basically because I'm forced to. <laughs> <laughs> Under duress. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I entertain other people and uh, and so on. Yeah. So um, about you, you did touch with me earlier about you spent some time in the rural areas, but you couldn't spend too much time there. I think yeah, if yeah. you could, if you could elaborate on that a little bit, it's interesting for me to get the comparison. Well, I used to be uh, married to a Thai lady many, many, many years ago and uh, she was from uh, Radbury and uh, her parents' house was near a river, uh, a small village called Potaram and uh, yeah, I built her a house there at the time and uh, yeah, we spent some time well there. I introduced her brother to, uh, to grow cows. Okay. So I bought the first lot of cows there. And and or? Yeah. No, no, real cows. Real cows. Uh, European yeah. cows, yeah. And uh, they they started to uh, to do business with milk and meat, and uh, yeah, I, I, my my two sons with her were very small at the time. So for them, growing up uh, a little bit in the countryside was uh, was a learning effect, mm -hmm. right? How to deal with people uh, in in that part of the world, and. Uh, the, my uh, parents-in-law, they were quite simple people, very nice, but quite simple people. So it was a simple way of life, uh, which is of course a, a, a very big difference between the normal way of life, coming out of Hong Kong, coming out of Germany, living in Bangkok. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, uh, you know... Uh, culture shock? Fan no, not culture no. shock. No, 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 no. I, uh, I feel quite comfortable there, but mm -hmm. it's the amenities that you don't have, mm -hmm. right? It's fans instead of air conditioners. Uh, it's water from 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 the barrel uh, rather than fresh water from the, from the pipe. Yeah, you yeah. know, and uh, things like that. So um, I think today I couldn't do that anymore. I, I could go there for, t for a day or two. Yeah. You know, we, we travel quite a bit, uh, so we, we go to the north a lot. Uh, I, I love being uh, in elephant sanctuaries uh, in, in, the, in the Golden Triangle. Uh, we go there quite often, uh, Chiang Mai, Chiang Rai. Uh, beautiful, beautiful areas. Uh, but for you, it's important to have access to European immediate It's coming food. out of a five-star hotel and, yeah. then, <laughs> and then going to the farm for a couple of hours of and then going, go back. Back, going back, taking the shower, you know. And you know and what you like, that's, that's, that's the lifestyle you like. And I know there's many retirees 
that, that are, plan are planning retirees that also want that lifestyle. They, they, not everybody wants to go and live out in the rural areas like me of Thailand. It is where it suits me and, and, and I just love it out there. I love being on the farm and working on the farm, but it doesn't suit everybody. I know many of retirees that watch this channel, they're more into, they want to be in the city, they want to have access to a cinema, they want access to good food, uh, and so your lifestyle is, is very much in line with a lot of people that watch this what channel. What I can recommend is, I mean, every retiree who comes to Thailand should travel the country, number one. Uh, understand what Thai culture and Thai life is. And it's different in different parts of Thailand. Yeah, uh, we, we have uh, 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 the South, which is uh, the people are a bit more hot-hearted. Uh, a lot of them are Muslims. Uh, the North is uh, completely Buddhism, uh, which, is, uh, which is different. Uh, so they should choose carefully where they want to stay, mm -hmm. uh, number one. Second thing is everybody I recommend to learn the language. Because I know a lot of people here, even friends of mine that have been here for 20, 30 years, that doesn't, they don't speak a bit of Thai, mm -hmm. right? Which is again a learning process because with the language you understand the people better. Yes. And uh, how they react, how they respond, and and the Thais love it that when when Falang speak speak Thai. Yeah. So. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, uh, don't, uh, as a retiree, uh, look uh, around you what is possible. I came here as a retiree, mm -hmm. right? And I said in 2018, I don't want to do anything anymore. Then my wife said to me, hey, I cannot live like that uh, on an island with nothing to do. So we do a couple of research. I ended up with a swimwear store for my wife. Okay. Now I already have three. You got three swimmers. Yeah, we have three, three high profile. I was going to say, uh, Thomas, you don't look very retired. Like I'm looking around your place here. It didn't work out somehow. <laughs> it didn't work out somehow. Yeah, so uh, yes, of course, you have your personnel. Uh, they take a lot of uh, burden off you. But uh, at the end of the day, you are responsible. You, Of course, if you own something, you want to control uh, that everything works well. Yeah. So, uh, and even the medical side of it, uh, I couldn't leave away. So, uh, so you're also still involved? I have a clinic. Oh, you have a clinic here in Phuket? Yes. Okay. I have a clinic called City Care uh, in Kamala and then... Uh, what does that specialize in? Uh, we, ask, we, ha we do general medicine, uh, we do emergency medicine for that part of, uh, of, uh, of the island. Yeah. So people who have accidents or whatsoever come to us. Uh, general medicine. We are uh, one, or well, the only polyclinic on uh, in Phuket that is w from the uh, level of medicine. That's one one step below hospitals. Okay. Uh, we have uh, X-ray. We have uh, ultrasound. Uh, we have our own lab and so on. But our specialty is anti-aging and stem cell treatments. Oh, really? Medical stem yeah, cell yeah. treatments. So. We do uh, a lot of cartilage uh, repairs uh, with stem cells in knees, shoulders, hips. Um, we do uh, hair loss cases. We do, of course, a little bit of beauty uh, with stem cells instead of Botox. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we have uh, detox programs. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a big variety. We have four doctors. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's uh, so you got the restaurant, you got the clinic, you have the swimwear. I have three, three swimwear shops. shops. Is yeah. that it, or are you, you that's to, it? That's it. Okay. Are you planning anything else? Or? No. No. <laughs> no. Maybe there's a, a lesson here, a deeper lesson. Do you think that? Um, I mean, it's, it's often said that sometimes retiring and not having anything to do can be quite bad for your health and be quite bad for your mind. Do you think there's a deeper lesson here that if, if you are going to retire in Thailand? plan to have hobbies, plan to have something on the side? Like I think people have a, a dream sometimes that you'll hit the beach and just drink margaritas for the rest of your days and that'll be that. Uh, what and are your then opinions? quickly you'll be an alcoholic here. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah, there is a deeper lesson and the deeper lesson is listen to yourself. As a retiree, I can say I enjoy still having a purpose. Mm -hmm. Right, and uh, and uh, I think everybody uh, should listen to themselves. If they really don't want to do anything, just do it. But uh, don't walk away from interesting uh, uh, businesses uh, if you still have a chance to do it. 
you yes. know and it and it's fun for you and it's right? fun yes. it's fun for yeah. me yeah right I like meeting people uh, I like people that uh, come into the restaurant and say boy your food is fantastic uh, I love it I come again uh, that is so much of uh, uh, yeah it, it does something to your self-conscious you know uh, it, it, it does make you proud in a way and is there anything that you struggle with in Thailand? Has there been any like challenges that you find with, maybe it's the culture, maybe it's the, the way things are done here differently to Germany. Is there anything particularly challenging? It could be in business or it could be in your personal life. Is there anything that, because being an expat, it's not all roses and, and wonderful in Thailand. There are some issues sometimes. Is, is there anything in particular for you that stands out? Yeah, uh, I would say that the Thai government makes it very difficult uh, for themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I'm German. I come from a very orderly, very disciplined country. Yeah. Where bureaucracy is totally overrated, right? Uh, but Thailand uh, has so much possibilities and sometimes they stand in their own way. But this, I think, is the biggest downturn in Thailand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everything else is fine. Yes, you have a few structures. Look at only one thing: compare taxi prices in Bangkok and taxi prices in Phuket. Yeah. Right. Phuket ten times. Ten times Bangkok. more. I've been shocking. This trip has been shocking <laughs> yes. uh, about the price. Even grand. Yeah, because the taxi business is in a very few hands here. Yeah, yeah, yeah yes. That's so it's right. like a monopoly. Mm -hmm. Right, so uh, this, of course, could be uh, easily avoided. Uh, it doesn't need to be cheap, right? Uh, actually, I find uh, the guy, I pity the guys in Bangkok uh, that drive off with 35 baht uh, ground price, and uh, I don't know, they get uh, 200 baht for 40 kilometers. Yes. Right? That's too low, right? I think they should earn more also, but not as much as here, <laughs> right? <laughs> this is shocking. So, shocking here. The, Sometimes it's not really uh, fair, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the same is with uh, with the people. Uh, we, we I was here in the times of COVID, mm -hmm. right? And uh, we did a lot uh, in order to uh, feed the people that had nothing yeah. to eat anymore, right? Yeah. So uh, that is uh, basically the only downside that I can think of. Your, your wife being Russian as well, there's a lot of talk on the internet at the moment regarding Phuket and Russians. Yeah. Um, and I've asked another couple of people about their opinions. I have no opinion because I don't live here. Mm. What, what is your opinion on, on the situation? I, have you seen an influx of, of Russians? And is yes. it affecting uh, negatively or positively the local economy? And Yeah, it depends actually where. Uh, yes, we have a big influx of Russians since the war. But uh, due to uh, Putin's legislation that uh, he will freeze all the assets of Russians that do not return, we had a lot of people going back as well. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, uh, a lot of Russian, uh, but also Ukrainians, they own properties here. And they come uh, for a month, two, three per year. Yeah. So the community of Russians was always very high. My son goes to an international school uh, here in Phuket uh, and uh, that school has, uh, I think it's the third largest community behind, uh, beside Thais and English, uh, the third largest country community is Russians mm -hmm. in that school. Uh, and we have 800, almost 1000 kids there. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, Russians always played a big role in the development of Phuket. Uh, recently they say, and in Pattaya that's already for quite some time, mm -hmm. that with the Russians and with Russians' money some mafia structures uh, are on the way in Phuket. I haven't seen it yet, I, yeah. I can't say. If so, probably in Patong, where, where the amusement center of the island is, because that's where the most money can can be made in in that kind of uh, uh, illegal uh, uh, illegal business. Yeah, yeah. Right. But here, uh, up here, I can't see any bad influence or uh, on. No, I have many Russian friends there. 
really nice people. Everyone's here legally on the visas, just legally, like any other expats. Right? Like everybody yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like everybody yeah. else. Good yeah. spenders. Uh, they like the the nice lifestyle. Uh, and uh, yeah, they are pleasant people. Yeah. Very pleasant that's, people. That's been my limited experience yeah. of being here. That's been my experience too. Well, thank you, Thomas, for this long uh, discussion with me. And it's been really interesting to get insight into your life as a, an entrepreneur and somebody that's been in Thailand since before I was born, actually. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, is there anything else you'd like to say? I mentioned about the, the restaurant, working people. Are you in here a lot? Would people bump into yeah. you if they came in? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, normally they bump into me. And I'm at least at the restaurant uh, every second or third night. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't want to say anything about quality. I, uh, uh, they, uh, whoever comes has to see and, and taste it by, for themselves. We have probably one of the most beautiful locations here. Yeah. Right? We are on the lake. Uh, we, have, uh, we are big. We have 400 seats. We have uh, a lounge style. Uh, as you can see, we have a lounge style uh, indoors. We have 120 seats outdoors. We have a beer garden that, uh, by the way, on uh, on Beautiful October fir October first, we open uh, with a big Oktoberfest. Oh yeah! Uh, same like in same <laughs> like German in Munich. Out, yeah. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. So we have beer from the tap and so on. And uh, yeah, uh, try it out uh, whenever. I'm going to leave all the links and locations below to all Thomas's uh, retirement ventures, <laughs> <laughs> so you can check them out there. Thanks a lot, Thomas. Right, it was my pleasure. <laughs>